Good morning, everyone. Welcome back. Oh, let's get the game audio going. There we go. Hope everybody's doing well. Good morning. How you doing, K-Mac? All right, so um, No Man's Land came out, as I'm sure any of you farm sim fans are already aware. Um, <clears throat> the, the cool thing about this map is that you basically start, well, not with nothing in a material sense, but you start with nothing in terms of the, the land, right? So all the land on the map is like this. Um, it's grassland and forest. And so it's up to you to build a farm from scratch. Oh, that sounds good, K-Mac. Fireplaces are nice, aren't they? Um, so there are, there are three modes that you can start a game in FS22 and, and in FS19 as well. So you've got, what is it, new farmer mode, which starts you, which starts to map with all of the starting equipment as well as some land. Um, you have $100,000 and there's no loan. Generally, that's the easiest way to start on a given map. Um, hey, happy holidays to you too. Thanks for the, thanks for the Risa. Appreciate that. Um, and then there's Farm Manager, where you start with no equipment and no land, but you have one and a half million dollars to get going. Um, and I think there's no loan. Let me just double check that. Yeah, and there's no loan. And then uh, there's the hardcore mode, which is... I can't remember what they call it. I'm sorry. Uh, the third option, uh, which is where, you know, the game starts in all the hardest settings, uh, the, the, the most difficult economy setting, and you start with 500000 and you have a loan to pay off as well. Uh, and that and that one you don't start with anything either. So, um, but with this map, it's a little bit different because on this map, all three options start with the starter equipment. Um, the easiest option also gives you the land and a few buildings. Um, but the other two options are basically the same. Um, no, there aren't. As far as I know, there aren't any settings for crop failures or weather damage or anything like that. Um, so here's what I've done. I've started on the medium setting, which gives us one and a half million to start with. Now, like I said, you actually start with some equipment anyway, even though you probably aren't supposed to. Um, that might just be an oversight on the map. Uh, but anyway, I'm going to get rid of the starter equipment, and it has very low value, which you'll see uh, in a few minutes. Um, I put, I almost always put economic difficulty on easy, just so that it's not as grindy. Um, basically, that just means that you get more money for the things that you sell. Um, and if there were contracts, you would get more money for contracts. Okay, um, but aside from that, I have everything else on the hardest settings. So um, we'll do one day per month on the seasons to begin with. Uh, we've got snow, we've got crop destruction, plowing, stones, lime, weeds. Those are all turned on. Um, engine start is off. Stop and go braking is off. Trailer fill limit is on. That's where the the limit, the trailers are limited on weight rather than only volume. Uh, so the net result of that is that depending on what you put in your trailer, you might not be able to fill it before you can't hold anymore. I put fuel usage on high because normal fuel fuel usage you can I mean you can drive a tractor for years and not have to refuel it which doesn't make sense to me so I set that to high and then all the auto refill options are turned off. Okay, so that's where we're at in terms of the game. Um, this is this plot of land is where you would typically start. So let's drive over there. 
and we'll see what we have. Um, no limits for roads or bridges, as far as I know, K-Mac. I don't think so. Whoa, Hoomstuff. Thank you very much. Appreciate that. Says, back home for the holidays. Excited for a comfy farming sim playthrough. Yeah, me too. That was very generous of you. Thanks. And, um, yeah, I'm off. I'm off next week. So I'm going to try to get some additional streams in next week as well. I'm looking forward to it. We might even have to go back to Factorio <laughs> and finish Factorissimo one of these days. Okay, so here is... Let me turn the map on. So here's the plot of land that you normally start with, and there would be a few buildings here. Uh, but like I said, in, uh, in farm manager mode, you start with no buildings. Um, there is one field that's already been cut, uh, but it's rather small. So, like, from a roleplay standpoint... When I see this map, I'm imagining, um, I'm imagining that we are somewhere like in, in the north and probably west of the Rockies. I'm thinking maybe we're in Montana or Wyoming or maybe even Alberta or British Columbia. Um, we've, uh, We've been somewhat successful in our career by uh, accumulating one and a half million bucks. And we decided to retire early and buy some land. And uh, we're out here really in the middle of nowhere. And we're going to try to set up a farm. So um, now this is, uh, this is the equipment that you start with, right? As you can see, it is old. It is dirty. And it's fairly run down. If we look at our equipment list, uh, we can see that uh, this stuff has not been maintained. Uh, the value is quite low. Even if we were to sell it, we're going to get next to nothing for it. Um, but if if you wanted to play, if you wanted to play on this map, and you really wanted a survival type of experience, then start with this equipment because it's going to be a challenge. Um, when, the, when the equipment is as old as this is, um, it requires frequent maintenance, um, and you'll be, your maintenance costs are going to be fairly significant. So, so if you wanted to do like a hard mode game, uh, survival type thing where you really have to work, uh, quite hard for all the money, uh, I would start in hard mode and use the starter equipment. Now, in my case, I'm going to sell the starter equipment and we'll, we'll get some of our own from the shop. Okay, so, um, and I'm just going to sell it all. I guess the realistic thing to do would be to take it all to the shop and sell it there. So, let's do that. I'm going to try to play this map as realistically as possible which means I'm not going to be warping around. Um, actually, you know what? Let's, uh, I think I'll keep the weight. Right, so I'm not going to warp around. I'm going to walk or drive wherever we need to go. Okay, so I think I can probably, let's see if I can attach this plow to the front so we can carry two things back at once. And we'll take this stuff to the shop and sell it. Yeah, there we go. That's convenient. I'll keep the weight. I think, uh... I think weights are still heavy even if they're even if they're not maintained. <laughs> I don't think they lose weight or anything like that. Alright, so we'll drive this stuff back to the shop and we'll get it sold. I'm gonna turn off the map. We don't really need it. 
right? So there aren't any, um, no paved roads here. We just have this dirt road that gets us to and from the shop. Um, I will start with that particular piece of land. Just because I think it's a good place to start. Yeah, I agree with you, K-Mac. Yeah, it's a matter of preference. Now, you guys know me. Normally, I'm not, uh, I'm not terribly opposed to even incorporating minor cheats in my games just to make the gameplay um, quicker paced and a little bit easier sometimes. Um, but just by the nature of how this map is set up and the type of play that it was intended for, I think... I think more realistic gameplay is in order here, so I'll do my best to keep things realistic. Bit of a long drive to the shop. Um, we'll buy ourselves a new tractor while we're there. Hopefully one with a higher top speed and then we'll use that to haul things back and forth. We'll get all the starter stuff sold. And you know what? Now that I think of it, I may as well buy new equipment so that I don't go back empty. So we'll pick up some new equipment while we're here as well. So, out here in the middle of nowhere, they actually have a very, very nice shop. And here's, um, what should we name her? Doris. Okay. Um... Owned items. Let's sell the tractor. Let's see, they're only giving us twenty six hundred for the tractor. Twenty two hundred for a harvester. Oh, I'm gonna keep my pickup truck. Oh. Sorry, I'm selling stuff that I haven't brought here yet. I'm not supposed to do that. Okay. Hey, Jim, how are you? Good morning. All right. So first things first, let's buy the land that we're currently um, parking on illegally. All right. So that plot of land, 85000 And I think, yeah, it looks like every plot of land on the map has the same value. So... You just buy yourself a parcel, whichever one you want. Um, so we'll take number 26. That'll kind of start us off in the middle, and then we can start to expand around as we want more stuff. So we'll buy that plot of land. That now belongs to us. Thank you very much. Now, here's another thing to keep in mind on this map. Um, oh, let's sell that cultivator. Okay, well, I might as well sell the cedar, too, since I've already messed up the rest of it. Okay. So, all of our stuff is sold. Um, so, now we have to decide what equipment we should start with uh, based on the activity we want. Now, here's something that I've learned uh, after playing with this map for a few hours uh, by myself. Um, this map... This map doesn't have cell points for everything. So um, I started playing this map personally a couple days ago. And um, I mowed a bunch of grass. I made silage bales, thinking that was how I was going to get started. And uh, after I spent about two hours mowing and baling, I realized that there is no cell point for bales on the map. There's no cell point for silage on the map. Now you can add them. Um, you know, you can, uh, at some point, you can buy a biogas plant, for example, but that's 435 grand. You could buy, you know, and then you have a place to, to take your silage and get paid for it. Um, so most of the cell points, well, not most, some of the cell points you're going to have to put in yourself. 
So to begin with, what I'm doing is I'm looking in the, uh, I guess the prices tab to see, to see where there's demand in the local market. So, um, we can see that the farm shop where we are right now, they're buying, they're buying grains. Okay. So all the basic crops they will buy here. So we can do, you know, we can do basic farming and field work. Um, no cotton though. They don't take cotton. So if you grow cotton, it'll need to be with the intention of turning it into something else. Okay. They don't buy seeds. They do buy eggs. So that's good to know. They buy wood chips and they buy straw. And after that, everything else that they buy are these manufactured ingredients or manufactured items that come from the crops. Um, they do buy stuff from the greenhouses, uh, furniture, and then, you know, you have your, your farm products. They don't buy any of that. They don't buy stones either. I was dismayed to find out. So when we pick stones from our field, um, we'll probably just have to put them in a pile somewhere until we have a means to use them for something else. Okay. So we can see from here, we can sell, we can sell eggs. We can sell straw. Uh, you can't sell wool. So sheep are, wouldn't be a good idea to begin with. Um, but since we can sell eggs, we can sell, uh, tomatoes and lettuce and strawberries and we can do arable crops. So based on all that, I think the way for us to go is to, uh, start with, start with arable farming rather than, rather than going directly to animals. Um, but we can do chickens and we can do greenhouses. So that's, that's going to be my plan to start. Um, I've seen some other guys on YouTube, um, who start the map with a biofuel, uh, factory, which will take wood, right? Cause there's no, there's nothing, there's nothing for wood on the map either. Um, and we are going to have to clear some trees. So I think that'll be probably one of the first, um, structures that we want to buy. And, and if we have enough money left over, maybe we'll just go ahead and do that at the beginning. Uh, let me find it here. Did I pass it? There is a biomass. Maybe it's in selling points. There we go. Yeah. So there's a biomass heating plant where you can sell, uh, looks like you can sell wood. You can sell, it looks like straw and then straw bales and wood chips. Okay. Um, so we might need to, we might need to put in one of those. And then for stones, there's a debris crusher that you can buy where you can take your stones. Um, and there's also in the factories, there's also a lime factory. I think, although I think that's a mod. Where is it? I think it's a mod and I didn't download it, but there's a, there's a lime factory mod where you can feed it stones and you'll get lime out of it. So that could be a good way to use the stones, but that stuff costs money. So we won't buy it right away. All right. So, um, knowing that we're going to be doing mostly arable farming to start with, we're going to need a tractor. So let's start, let's start with a tractor. So I think we'll want a medium tractor. We'll want one that has a front PTO so that we can use, um, so that we can use power tools on the front of it. And I'm also going to want, um, a decent amount of horsepower because there are some hills on our land. And I will want to be able to put a front loader on it so that we can move pallets and stuff like that. And I don't want to spend too much money. So all that being said, um, this John Deere could be a good option, although that's only got 175 horsepower. 
Uh, it's not quite as much as I would like. Uh, the Massey will go up to 200. Let's see if we've got some inexpensive options. Uh, the Valtra would be good, but I don't think it has a PTO on front. Landini, I've never heard of. Well, I've heard of it, but I've never, I've never used one. It's somewhat inexpensive, though. All right, let's um, let's check out that Massey. Let's price this one out. Okay, so you can put a front loader on it. Either a quick or a hower. I'm not sure what the difference is. Okay. Looks like there is a difference. Uh, and then we can give it 200 horsepower. And we can add GPS to it later. I've got GPS mod. And. Is that a PTO on the front? I think that's what that is. Right there. Maybe it's not. It looks like it. Yeah. Yeah, it's a PTO. It's just not green. Um, so that would be about 150 grand. Yeah, I think that's going to be our least expensive option that will do everything that I want. Okay. Yeah, so we'll do this. We'll get the front loader. We'll get the big motor. Okay, so we've got 200 horsepower to work with. And there she is. Okay. So we got that taken care of. Um, so since we have the front loader, we're going to need, um, we're going to need the arms. And we got the Hauer. Um, all right. looks like we've got two options for the Hauer. I'm not sure which is the right one, though. Let's look at our tractor again and see if it tells me. Oh, there's no combinations. I'm not sure which one to use. I'm, I'm going to assume that the 150 is for small and the 190 is for... I don't know, for large or medium? Does anybody know? Well, we're going to have to take a chance here. Oh. Combinations. Okay, that just tells me what tools I can use it with. All right, well, let's get the small one here, and if that's not the right one, we'll have to sell it at a loss. Um... Yeah, that looks like it's an appropriate size. Okay. Um, I'm not going to buy any tools for it yet because I'm not sure exactly what I'm going to need to begin with. Um, I mean, we'll need a bucket at some point. Uh, so we should probably buy a bucket. That is for a front loader. Or for a wheel loader, I think. All right, so we'll buy the small bucket. And we're going to want some pallet forks. And we may want a log fork at some place, at some point, but I'll hold off on that. Okay. 
So we got front loading sorted out. Uh, now for the field. All right, so first things first, I'm gonna wanna, that field that is already there um, is kind of small, so I'm gonna wanna expand it. So I'm gonna buy a subsoiler that can do plowing um, as well as creating new fields. And we've got these four meter varieties that we can power with our machine. Um, I'm not sure what the difference is between the AgriSim and the and the Kuhn. I think I'll get the Kuhn because it says it requires less horsepower, so maybe that means that it will give us less of a load on the equipment. Okay, so that will allow us to um, to create fields and plow them. Um, uh, a mulcher would be a good idea. I think we can mulch the uh, the potato crop that's on there right now that's currently not being used. Let's see. The cheap options go up to three meters. This one is much bigger. Yeah, let's go ahead. I'll get this one. Okay, we're gonna want a fertilizer spreader to use for fertilizer and lime. And for that, uh, again, I'm just gonna start with something relatively inexpensive. We'll just buy the, the Breedle with no options. Um, we'll want a cultivator. Now for the cultivator, this type of cultivator will pick up stones. Um, there is, we've also got, okay. Disc arrows, I think, do not pick up stones. So I think maybe we'll do a disc arrow instead of one of those other cultivators. Um, and again, we want something that we can run with less than 200 horsepower. Again, there's hills, so I don't want to go to 180. Um, we'll get this one that takes 140. Okay, um, we're gonna need a cedar so that we can plant crops. Um, and I'm thinking one of these rear mounted ones will be good for us to start with. Um, it doesn't look like any of these will allow us to direct drill until we get into the more expensive ones. Oh, this one does. This Nordsten. And that one works with the seeding options mod. Okay, it looks like the Nordsten was not intended to be direct drill, but the seeding options mod, I think, converts everything to direct drill. All right, we'll get the Nordsten. Okay. So this gives us pretty much everything we need to get started, I believe. So let's get started. Um, we'll just have to uh, start taking everything to the farm. So first things first, we'll get the we'll get the front loader forks put on, and then we'll need to we'll need to start buying some buildings as well. Okay, and then I can take one of these tools. We'll start with the bucket, I guess. Okay. Um, and then... I 
think I'm going to want to use the, the subsoiler first. Yeah, I'm going to want to mulch and subsoil first. Yeah, so you know what? As a matter of fact, let me get out of the way. Let's take those first, and I'll put one on the front and one on the back. That way we can get them both to the farm in one trip and we can start doing some work. Alright, so we'll put the mulcher on the back. Oh, and we're also going to want a sprayer to control the weeds. And I hope this I hope this thing can use narrow wheels. I didn't check that. Uh, I think it's not gonna let me attach it. All right, so let's put that on the back and we'll have to we'll put the mulcher on the front. Um, it could be that I'm trying to pick this up on the wrong side. I think that's it. Okay. And that means that I picked up the mulcher from the wrong side as well. Here's my... My awesome driving at work. No, that was right. Yeah, that one can only connect from one side. Okay, so let's get this back to the farm. And then we can, uh, we can start building the farmyard as well. We'll need a house, we'll need a silo, a couple of sheds. And we could even, we could even start the game with some chickens in a greenhouse. I think we'll have enough money to to get at least some of that going from the beginning. Uh, we'll want a workshop. And we're gonna start with some of the, um, some of the lower end buildings. Again, we're out in the wilderness. We don't want anything that's going to require too much on the maintenance side. <laughs> no, an FS-22, you don't you don't hear the chickens unless you're unless you're close to them. All right, so let's just park here and uh, let's get let's get a look at our land and start putting things together. Okay, so we've got some clear area there. We've got a little pad back here. Um. We've got a pad here, and then of course we can build wherever else we we desire, as long as we stay within our little rectangle. Um, since we got a foundation here, I think I'm going to put my house there. In 
and here's one uh, you can buy for 10 grand. This is the one that you normally start with on this map. So I think we'll use that one. And it happens to fit here pretty nicely. Okay. So we got ourselves a place to sleep. Um, we're going to want a silo. Okay, and this is the silo that you start the game with. Um, and I think, I think they, I think this is over, is over here. Yeah, and I think I do want it near the road so that we can loop in and loop out. Um, maybe maybe we rotate it a bit and put it here next to this rock. I think that looks good. Okay. Got a silo. Um, I've heard that you can't get water out of this pond. So we might want to put, we might want to put like a water source next to the pond, but we'll decide that later. Um, now I want a couple of sheds. So let's see what sheds we have that look realistic. Um, this is the one that you start the game with, uh, normally, and that goes over here, um, although I don't think I want that one. We'll do, we'll do a, a better shed. This one will be good to start with, Let's see if we can find uh, a nice place for it. I want to put it here. No, we don't have a lot of room there. All right, so let's put the shed over here. Is there enough room here? Okay. Uh, it's going to interfere with the trees. Hmm. Could put it over here. Uh, sorry, guys, I'm going to need a minute. Alright, you know what, maybe, maybe I am going to want to use the, uh, the starter shed. Although it's, it's not going to be big enough though. Okay, no, this is the shed. This is the shed that I want. Um, I think we'll just, we'll squeeze it in here in front of the trees. Um, and one of our, I guess one of the things we'll want to do first is clear some of these trees. Take that small one out. All right, so we got a shed. We've got a silo. And we've got a farmhouse. Is there anything else I need to get started? Well, <clears throat> let's do the let's do the chickens. OK. 
Okay, and I think it makes sense to put those over here. Okay, and we'll clean up we'll clean up the terrain and stuff uh, here in a moment. Okay. And let's do a greenhouse. We'll do the medium greenhouse. Um, maybe we put that right here. Okay. Um, yeah, the produce is going to come out the side there, so we'll want to, maybe we can put that here. That seems to make sense. Okay. And now we just need to do a little bit of landscaping. put it down right here. Okay. I wonder why I can't get rid of that grass. for the chickens. Let's put dirt here in front of the greenhouse so we can get our water in there. Okay. What am I missing, guys? Well, we'll figure it out as we go, right? All right, so let's buy let's buy some chickens, and then I'm gonna have to buy some chicken feed to begin with. Uh, we got young chickens, or we got chickens that are already grown. Okay, so these chickens will. Let's get 20 of those. And let's buy a rooster. And we'll just have to buy our chicken feed to begin with. Okay, and then the, the eggs will show up there. And the feed goes there. And then we'll need a water tank for the greenhouse. So let's buy one of those. Let's see. Is it under animals? Yeah. Okay. 
Okay, that one holds 8,000 liters, 7,300 liters, 6,000, 2,000. All right, let's go with this one. Oh, this one actually you might be able to pull with a truck, it looks like. Probably either of these I could pull with the truck. Okay. Kathbeck, thanks for the follow. Oh, you know what? I need to do a little landscaping in front of the shed there. So let's get these tools dropped off. I think I'm going to want to start by mulching this. That'll give us some extra fertilization, I believe. So I'll leave that there, and then we'll want to use the plow next. Oh, you know what? One thing that I need is a workshop. Okay, so here's the old timey <clears throat> rundown workshop. Um, let's put that. Let's put that right here. That seems like it was intended to go there. Okay. All right, let's go to the shop and we're gonna get chicken feed and we're gonna get the water tank. <clears throat> and that way we can get our, get our greenhouse and our chicken started and then, <coughs> pardon me, and then we'll start working on our fields. And as our operation grows, we'll, we'll buy more, we'll buy more stuff. We'll probably, <coughs> at some point, rather than, rather than renovating the current farmyard, we'll probably just build a bigger one uh, once we scale up the operation a bit to require multiple vehicles. Um, for now, I'm going to be doing all the work myself, so I think having um, I think having a single tractor makes sense right now. I'll do the field work on my own. And we'll enjoy the scenery while we're getting work done. Um, I also want to buy a chainsaw. So let's remember to get a chainsaw. <laughs> Have you not played Farm Sim, Jim? I probably should. Oh, okay. You use a Mac? Okay, now I hope 
my hope is that I'll be able to get a bag of chicken feed into the bucket. Uh, but we'll have to see. Okay. So let's go into the shop here. Let's buy ourselves a chainsaw and uh, some chicken feed. All right. What kind of chainsaw should we use? They're all the same as far as I know. Um, yeah, we'll go with the still. Okay, thank you. And we need some chicken feed. Pig food. Oh, okay. Well, the, the chickens we can feed. Uh, we can feed wheat. Yeah, so here's what I'll do. I'll buy. Let's buy the big bag. Let's get a big bag carrier for the front loader. We'll get the dual big bag lifter. And then we can carry two bags. And we'll use that. Let me think. We'll use that instead of the bucket. Um. Yeah, and hopefully I can just hold the bag over where the feed goes and it'll go in. I, I'm not sure. We'll find out. How about these big pallets? Are there big pallets of chicken feed? No. Okay. So we'll get two big bags of chicken feed. All right. All right. So once again, I'm going to put this bucket down. Whoopsie. luck trying to do this with the trailer attached. We really have to make it hard for ourselves. <laughs> okay, let's see if I can figure this out. them both. Hmm. Is there something in the menu I'm supposed to see? No. Oh, there we go. Attach lizard wheat. Okay. Yeah. Okay, I'm going to be a little front heavy on the way back. Oh yeah. Look. <laughs> Look at the wheel spin. I need to get some water in in this trailer. All right, well, it's, it'll be a fun ride home. I might oversteer a little bit. 
<laughs> and hopefully we'll be able to fill this in our pond, the water tank, I mean. Um, if we can't, then we'll have to put in a, a water <clears throat> a water tower or something at the farm. And then we'll have to pay for the water, unfortunately. <clears throat> um, usually in the base game, you can back your trailer into a pond and you can fill it up for free. Um, but I, I saw somebody either in Reddit or Discord saying that you can't do that with the pond on this map. So uh, we'll see if it works once we get back to the farm. I'm just glad I got this bag carrier figured out. And this will be a good way for us to get seed and, and stuff back to the farm as well. Dry fertilizer, things like that. Although uh, a trailer would be even better. Okay. Well, let's see what happens when I bring it here. Ah, good. Okay, apparently that's all the feed that they need at the moment, so we'll put the rest down. Okay, and then Attach that one. There we go. All right, let's see if we can get some water. Looks like you're meant to. <laughs> I mean, I suppose that could be a good place. See, I should have a little, uh, I should have a little fishing canoe out here. Okay, it looks like the rumors were correct. I can't fill it there. Alright. So, we'll have to go with plan B. Ugh. Okay, would that be under silos? Or containers? Water tank. Okay. Let's go with the old style water tank. And we'll put that. Let's see. Is that a good place for it? I think so. Okay. Like I said, I think <clears throat> we're going to have to pay for the water, unfortunately. Alright, 
Why is this not working? Open water valve. Okay. <clears throat> oh, okay. Looks like I don't have to pay for it. At least I don't see my money changing. Which makes sense, I guess, if you pay for the building, and I assume there's a maintenance cost for it. Um, hmm, okay, that doesn't show buildings. Filled up. Uh, let's close the valve. Alright, I guess I gotta move this out of the way first. Alright, I guess you only have to open it one time and that's it. <laughs> Alright, let's give some water to the greenhouse. And I'm just going to back this thing in and I'll leave it in front of the greenhouse. So that when it needs more water. I mean, actually I'm not sure how much water it holds. I may need more than one fill. Uh, but we'll find out here in a minute. I haven't used one of these yet. to be rather thirsty. Oh, okay. Yeah, looks like it'll hold uh, maybe about 10,000 liters. So we'll give it some more water. Um, so uh, we can make either tomatoes or lettuce or strawberries. Lettuce... It looks like lettuce uses the most water. Cycles per month. So tomatoes give us 672 cycles a month. And there's one water icon. This has two water icons, half as many cycles. And this one is one water icon, 672, and it gives us two each. So I don't know which is best. Um, let's just go with, uh, let's go with tomatoes. Oh, and then the other thing is you should be able to tell it whether you want it to go into storage. Okay. I thought there was an option to direct sell uh, rather than put things in storage. Um, but I don't know. Maybe that's maybe that's turned off on, on this map or something. Oh, yeah. I would love some good tomatoes. All right, so let's fill up the tank again. Uh, that way we can we can get that thing completely filled. Do I have to open it again? Oh, okay. Yeah, it looks like I have to open it each use. 
it closes itself apparently. <clears throat> Click on the right side. Oh, on top of the produce. Okay. Thank you. We'll try that when we get back. In retrospect, I wish I would have made some more space between the workshop and the water tank. But we'll just have to drive carefully around here. best place to leave the pickup. We'll move that. up the rest of the way. <laughs> well, I do have a mod on here that gives me super strength, and I think that'll let, that'll let me move pallets and stuff <laughs> with my bare hands. Speaking of pallets, you know what? I hope that I'm going to be able to pick up the pallets from the side. Because <laughs> I don't have any room to pick them up this way. Well, we'll find out. I may have to, uh, we may have to, uh, we may have to move the greenhouse after our first crop. We'll see. Okay. Um, oh, there we go. Okay. All right. Yeah. So you can, you can change it either to store or to sell. Distributing. Uh, I'm not sure what distributing does. Let's see if it's got greenhouses here. Hmm. Okay. Well, that's something that we'll have to check into. I don't know the difference between selling and distributing. Okay, now I know storing is it just puts the pallets next to the greenhouse and you pick them up and move them yourself and you get the best sell price by doing so. Um, selling is where you don't get any pallets. It just gets sold as it gets made. Um, but you take uh, a penalty on how much money you get and then distributing. I don't know what that is. I don't know. Maybe, maybe one of you guys could check that for me and let me know what distributing does. Um, let me speed up the time scale a little bit. I had it at 1x. We'll we'll set it at 3. All right, so let's go put this fork away. And then we'll move our truck out of the way. And yeah, we'll put this over here. And then we'll start working on the on the field. up this weight. There we go. Okay, so first things first, we'll mulch the field that we got. Oh, I need to get on the other end of it. Yeah, we can see that the weight needs maintenance, so we'll take that over to the shop and fix up the weight so that it doesn't get lighter on us. Sorry for the slow driving here, guys. I'm not the best, as most of you know already. Okay. 
So let's get this weight fixed. Okay, repair. 46 bucks. Alright. I'm not going to paint it. Whoops. Didn't want to do that. Stay there, shop vac. There we go. Oh, okay. Uh, yeah, thank you. Connect. Alright, so if you have a production chain set up, then distributing will move it automatically to the next point in your production chain. That makes sense. Alright. Well, let's... Uh Let's get to work. Oh, look, you can mulch grass, too. Interesting. All right, so I'm going to start by mulching this uh, just so we get, you know, the improved yield that one gets from mulching. Although um, that's only going to apply in this section of the field, obviously. And then I'm going to expand this field using the plow. Let's go around the edges first, give myself some room to work, and then we'll go up and down. Yeah, so um, I know a lot of you guys watching right now, um, you know, you know me from Factorio. Uh, and that is still, I would say, my main game as far as contract uh, content creation goes. Um, but after Farm Sim, or after Factorio, Farm Sim is probably my most played game. Um, I'm not sure exactly how many hours I've got, but I started playing Farming Simulator with FS15, and then, and then 17, and 19, and now 22. Uh, but I haven't played in a while. So I'm kind of happy to be back at it. I really enjoy the game. It's it's quite relaxing. You know, it's like playing Factorio with no biters. Um, except you don't have to think as hard. <laughs> so uh, it's a great game to play while you're watching YouTube or Netflix or something. Yeah, watch out for the crows. <laughs> and then we're going to have to pick the rocks out of the field, so we'll have to get a, a rock picker. A rock picker upper. And then, like I said, we'll just have to dump the rocks that we pick up. We'll just have to dump somewhere until we have an appropriate place to sell them or process them. Um, I don't think the lime factory is very expensive, so maybe, I don't know, if we have the lime, or if we have the room, jeez, I'm not talking very well today, if we have the room, maybe I'll try to, maybe we'll install that lime factory mod and see if we can put that in. I, I mean, I still have plenty of money left, so... Um, certainly in good shape there. Now, I, I still need to buy a combine and some other stuff, so um, I'm not going to... I'm not just going to start spending all my money right away until I'm sure that we have everything that we need. And we'll try to do it cheap to start. Uh, Meat Hammer, this is No Man's Land. Uh, which is a new map for FS22. It's on PC only at the moment. But I think it should be coming out on console. Um, the cool thing about this map is that, um, aside from this single field, 
there are no fields on the map. Uh, so whatever you do, you need to do on your own. So you make your own fields, you build your own farm, um, you cut down trees if you want. I guess you don't have to cut down the trees, but... All right, so I'll put this back here. I'll stick that way in the back. I'm not going to need to use that very often. Hey, Apache. And let's get our plow. Oh, yeah, sure. Yeah, so this is what the map looks like. Right, so you just have these plots of land that you can buy, parcels of land. Uh, right now, I just I own this one. Uh, and when you want to add more land, you just pick up another one. And, um, you know, it's up to you to decide uh, where you put fields, um, if you want to use it for forestry, for farming, whatever. Uh, you can you do all that on your own. Oh, okay. Whew. I thought I had this pointed the wrong way. Okay. So, here's what I want to do. I want to make this field... Oh, this... Yeah, the square in lot 33 is a vineyard, uh, as far as I understand. I haven't seen it myself yet. But I think there's a vineyard there. Although that might only be on the starting on the starting map, I don't know. But yeah, that's that's grapes. So Yeah, so I want to expand Oh, and thanks for the follow meat hammer. I want to expand this field uh, and make it as large as I can. Uh, to begin with, so um, we can we can extend it over this way a little bit, um, and then I want to extend it down here, uh, all the way up to my property line, which is right about here, right about where my chickens are, um, and then we'll bring it over, you know where these rocks are and around the rocks as far as I can go and then back up okay so that's the first order of business um, we'll want to get rid of this tree so let's do that uh, nope <laughs> I need my menu again There we go. Hmm. Why is that not doing anything? Maybe this is not on my land. It looks really close to the property line. Oh, it turns green, okay. Let's try getting closer then. Ah, there we go. Timber? Okay. And then I've got the Lumberjack mod here where um, you can get rid of the stumps using your chainsaw. Okay, let's see if I can push it over. There we go. Oops, and then we should be able to cut off the branches. Okay. Alright, and then we'll put this out of the way somewhere. 
Um, I think for now I'll just start making a wood pile over here by this rock. Okay. And at some point we'll have a place to take wood. Yeah, with the lumberjack mod you can you can get rid of stumps with the chainsaw. Which I think is actually pretty realistic for small uh for small stumps like that, but uh maybe not for big ones. But it is very convenient. Okay, so now we're gonna plow, but uh like I said we're gonna expand this field. So first thing is to do that. So let's expand this edge. I'll try to maintain this top edge the way that it is. Uh, oh, don't tell me. It considers this to be a cultivator. All right, we're gonna have to fix that, guys. I need to download another mod. Um, you can create you can create new fields with. Um, oh, isn't that lovely? The lizard subsoiler. Uh, my game crashed. Okay, so the the lizard subsoiler will be treated as a plow. Maybe we'll do that. Okay, <laughs> no problem, Jim. Um. Yeah, so there's a couple things here. There's a mod that allows you to create fields. Ah, here we go. Create fields with cultivator. Okay, and then let's look for the lizard subsoiler. Subsoiler with plow function. That's what I need. Okay. So let's do that. I, In fact, I, I think I would rather just use that. Um, so we'll have to go back to the shop and pick up a different plow. Um, I guess I don't really need this one then. I would rather have it plowed anyway instead of cultivated. So let's do that. All right. So we'll take this one back to the shop and sell it. Before I do that, let's get this truck out of the way. I may not have too much need for the pickup truck now that I've got a tractor, but we'll keep it anyway. Oh yeah. Um, I mean, I, I think I think they've gotten pretty good with with making mods available for the console, but it's still. I think it's still definitely a better 
playing experience on the PC, you know. Um, because there, there are a lot of mods that you will never be able to use on console because they're script mods and they don't allow those or at least Microsoft and Sony don't allow those for security reasons Do do. It's a bit of a drive. <laughs> yeah, this is this is a really cool map. And like I said, I, I'm I'm pretty sure it'll be coming out for. Uh, I'm pretty sure it'll be coming out on console. Pretty soon. All right, Doris. So you made me buy the wrong plow. Doris is not a helpful salesperson. All she, you know, I mean, she's a cashier. She's she's not good at advising me what equipment to use. All right, let's sell that. We'll take a bit of a loss, even though I didn't even use it. All right, subsoilers. We want the lizard, and it's not there. Maybe it's under plows. There it is. Oh no. That needs 320 horsepower. Or 260 horsepower. I don't have 260 horsepower. Okay, well, I guess we'll just get a plow. I do have 200 horsepower, so I can run this aggro, whatever you call it. Or we could get a bigger tractor. <clears throat> I've got money. I could just buy another, another large tractor. I can only drive one at a time, though. Because I said I wasn't gonna warp, I wasn't gonna warp around between vehicles. Um. All right. Well, let's see what our options are. Maybe I'll just, maybe I'll just buy a different tractor and sell the one that I got. It's kind of wasteful, but all right. So we'll need. 260 horse for that one. Um, so this is... No, that's not the one that we own. Which is the one that we own? Alright, the 6700 is the one that we own. Uh, what can we get that's 260 horse? We can get a class. Or a bigger Massey. Um, oh, we've got the case. It's an older model, but it checks out. <laughs> and it's inexpensive, so maybe we'll buy this one too. Let's see, for this one to get 
max power. It's going to be 138 grand. Um, yeah, you know what? Let's let's just replace. Let's just replace this one with a larger one. Oh, first let me uh, drop off the weight. We'll just buy a bigger machine. Again, I'm not planning to use workers anytime soon, so um, that's why I don't really need a second tractor. Although, let me check something. I wanted to see if this one can use narrow wheels. It can. Okay, that one can use narrow tires. Which is good. Um, let's see if the larger uh, version of that tractor can also do narrow wheels. Because I'm going to need narrow wheels for fertilizing mid-stage. So which one were we looking at? Was it the 8? Okay, the 7720. That's going to be 200, oh geez, 227 grand. This one is quite expensive too. All right, let's look at the class. Yeah, maybe the Axion is the way to go. Two hundred and thirty. Um, that one can't do a front loader, though. What's the difference between the seventy-seven twenty and the eight S? The eight S is bigger. It looks like, and it's not that much more expensive. And that'll go up to 305 horsepower. Can it do narrow wheels? It can. Okay. So we'll buy the 8S. Um, yeah, and Apache, you can um, you can swap the engine on this one, but I don't think it, it doesn't go high enough. At least I don't think it did. Yeah, no, that one only goes up to 200 horsepower. Okay, so let's sell the little one. I mean, it's a good thing I started with extra money because I'm, I'm making some expensive mistakes here at the beginning. But you know, I just retired from a software company and moved out here, so it's expected that I'm gonna ma make some mistakes. And I'm sure the locals are salivating. All right, does this thing fold? There we go. Okay. Argy Jimp, hello, how are you? Welcome to the stream. Okay, so we got a different Massey. Bigger, more powerful. Um, of course, that opens up additional options in terms of the other equipment that we can use because um, all of our initial selections were based on 200 horsepower rather than uh, 280 or 305 or whatever I've gotten this one so I forget what option I chose already but this should certainly be able to do everything that we needed to do and more <laughs> that sounds fun Jim they need a sailing simulator do they have do they have sailing simulators That would be an amazing journey. 
I've always thought that that would be very interesting. A grand adventure. All right. Back to the job at hand. So let's unfold this. And I'll cut it like this, and this way I'll be able to make a nice straight line by following the edge of the field. Uh, I'm going to need my menu here. Let's see. Huh. Oh, okay, there we go. Limit to fields. Okay, so allow create fields. I click it once and it's on. Okay, so now I'm gonna be I'm gonna be cutting ground. Let's do it. I'll get in the cab for this part. Again, I just want to keep a straight edge here, and that'll help us to uh, not get too close to my road. And I'm just going to try to keep my heading at 180 degrees or close to it. And we'll go as far as I can until it tells me I don't own the land. There we go. And that's as far as I can go. Okay. That's good. Now let's cut over this way. About up to where that stone is. And here my heading is going to want to be around 270. Yeah, that's far enough. Um, and we got a couple more trees we need to take out. Um, whoops. <laughs> I have magical trees that um, that remain standing. Okay. Cut off the branches. my wood pile over here next to this big boulder, right? Yeah. Okay. <clears throat> Let's get the other one. I'm a very strong lad, obviously. Very small trees. cutting is not working for me now.
There we go. That was weird. Okay. Oh, still got a little bit left. Okay, that branch doesn't want to come off. I don't know why. This is why I usually don't do forestry in this game. Okay. Oops. That's still in the way a little bit. Alright. That looks awesome, Jim. Continue cutting our field. Let's try to keep the edge here where it is. Okay, and I'm just going to try to smoothly cut around this boulder. Oh, okay. And that's the edge of my land in this direction. Okay. And then here, we'll try to go as close to north as possible. degrees is an acceptable level of accuracy. There. Okay. And then I just clear out everything that's left. And we've got ourselves uh, a decent sized field to start with. And um, I'm thinking the first crop will do sorghum. Well, actually, let's check. Maybe we'll do wheat. We'll see which one is... I want to do something that will feed the chickens that is um, harvestable as early as possible. And I think that might be wheat. Hey Jim, if you do that full time, would you would you live on your boat? I mean, or would, I guess you would have to maintain some kind of a residence, right? Or would you just get a PO box and just live on the boat all the time? Oh, okay. Yeah, because I imagine there would be certain periods where you're not going to want to be at sea constantly. That sounds amazing, man. Um, now I don't, I don't know anything about sailing. Although do I, I do, I do like boats. I used to live in Michigan where <clears throat> being on the water is a, a big part of the lifestyle. Um, but now I live in the desert, in the mountains, and I love the mountains. My wife and I are thinking about looking for some land 
somewhere in the forest up in the mountains where we can build a little cottage and spend a lot of time there when we retire or heck even before we retire just need to find a place with good internet <laughs> yeah Yeah, I, well, I live in El Paso, as a lot of you guys know, West Texas. And um, if we drive, I mean, we can drive two hours north of here into, um, into New Mexico, and you're at 10, 11,000 feet in the National Forest. Gorgeous views. Very few people around. It's it's incredible. I love it. Yeah, Cloudcroft, exactly. Cloudcroft, Ruidoso, Timberon, places like that. So you've been there, uh, K Mac. I'm happy to see that this this tractor is having no problem whatsoever with this with this plow, so that's good. I think we made a good choice. Yeah. Yeah, it's nice up there. And then if you go a little farther west, um, I mean, these are getting kind of far away from me, but. Well, you can keep going north, and then you get around Santa Fe and Taos. There's a lot of lovely places there. Um, we have some friends that actually just moved up there. Not Santa Fe, but uh, in a, a little village outside of Santa Fe that's up in the mountains. It's probably about an hour drive from Santa Fe. Uh, rather remote. You know, there's like a... There's a, there's one there's one general store in town. Um, there's a you know there's a couple cafes and a restaurant, a few gift shops. Uh, the village, um, you know, or the town actually owns a couple ski lifts, uh, which you can access from the sidewalk down the main street. <laughs> you just <laughs> get on the ski lift and ski down. Pretty incredible. Uh, and they they recently sold their house in El Paso, and they live there full time now. Um, they work remotely, so they kept their jobs, and they're up there now. And they send us pictures all the time that make us jealous. Yep. Yep, you got Carlsbad Caverns, Waco Tanks, uh, White Sands is not far from here. So there's lots of lots of interesting things to do around here, if you're so inclined. Okay. So this field, let's take a look. Um I don't know if Apache's still on, maybe he knows. Now in the game, or on this map, there's an option to get rid of all the boulders. All the boulders on the map. Um, yeah, hey Apache. Uh, do you know, is there is there a way that I can get rid of particular boulders on this map? Or can you only get rid of all of them? Okay, how, can you tell me how to do it? Because I wouldn't mind, like, getting rid of this one and getting rid of this one. Well, this one is not a, even on my land. Oh, okay. You can only get rid of all of them. Okay. 
I think it'd be cool if you could just get rid of particular ones, like if they had dynamite in the game or something like that. I wouldn't mind getting rid of this particular boulder, but uh, it's okay. We'll work around it. Um, this is the edge of my land. Do you think I should do all this part too? It would make it kind of hard to drive around this thing. I think I'll just leave it the way it is. I think it'll be easier to work if I've got some roundish type of corners. Okay. Yeah, so behind the shop, um, if you go down to the shop here, just behind the shop, like around this area, there are two signposts. And one of them says, cut this sign down and it'll remove all the trees on the map. And the other one says, cut this sign and it'll remove all the rocks on the map. And the rocks it's talking about are these big boulders. So you can do that if you don't want to deal with boulders and cutting trees down. You can get rid of all of them. But then, and I, I tried it as a test, but I just don't, you know, I just don't like the way the map looks. Then it's kind of barren. Okay, so... Um, so we've got that field cut, um, and then I, I own all this land back here. Okay, and I'm trying to stick to the property line more or less, but, you know, I've got all this all the way up to right about here. So we can make, we can make a, another fairly large field back here. And then all the way over to this corner. Okay, so this is quite a substantial, quite a substantial area. Um, we do have two large boulders that we'd have to contend with. Uh, but all the trees around here are fairly small, so I could probably just cut them down and carry them off. Um, this one I would leave, since it's surrounded by boulders anyway. Oh, hey, um, sorry, I don't know how to pronounce your name. Uh, Pequod, or... <laughs> I don't know. Uh, sorry if I mispronounced that. Um, but yeah, the... I started in farm manager mode. Um, and I think that's actually the hardest start I think would be starting in easy mode. Um, because then you only start with a hundred grand. Um, so if you wanted the biggest challenge, I think would be to start in easy mode. You do start with buildings and some really old equipment. Um, but you only have a hundred thousand and then you could change all the settings to, to hard mode. Um, the actual hard setting, you still start with some equipment, with some old equipment, but no buildings, and then you get, but then you start with 500,000, right? Um, of course, I mean, you can always just modify the cash that you start with to create whatever conditions you like, you know. Um, but without, without changing your save file or using a mod for that, I would say that the hardest start is to start on easy and then and then change to hard economy and change all the settings to hard mode. Farm manager gives you one and a half million to start with, uh, in addition to the old equipment. Okay. So, um, so like I said, we could, um, we could cut a big field in the back here, which I think I'll probably, I think that's probably what I'll do. Um, now on my, when I was playing this on my, on my personal map, um, I cut all the grass back here and made silage bales, but then I couldn't sell them. Um, so let me check. I don't think there's any, I don't think there's any sell point for grass. Yeah, you can't sell grass or hay. You can sell straw. Uh, but there's no sell point for grass or hay. So so I don't think the grass is really going to be useful unless I have animals because I won't be able to sell the grass or sell the silage at this point. So I think the thing to do uh, for us would be to cut another field in the back. 
a big one. Right, starting, you know, maybe starting, and like I said, there's a few hills back here. You know, so maybe starting around here. And just filling up this whole, this whole back lot with a big field. And we should be able to make a pretty good income off of that. So I think that's what I'm going to do. Um, but before I get started, let's take a look at how our chickens are doing. And our greenhouse and see if we've got anything produced yet. Oh, okay. Yeah, thanks, Apache. Yeah, I mean, if, if we can, if, if it does turn out that we can sell bales later, then um, I think I'll definitely want to plant some grass. Okay, so this is running. Let's see. Let's see how far. I don't know how often the produce actually shows up. Okay, well it says I have 65 liters stored, so I, I suppose once you store up enough to fill a pallet, then it appears out here for you to pick up and sell. And then our chickens. Okay, we got the 21 that we started with. They've got food. Um, health is low. Although I think that will increase, um, I think I think the productivity and health will increase over time, since we've got um, since we've got them fed. Yeah, and chickens can eat wheat, barley, and sorghum. So let's look at the calendar. Okay, so we'll be able to plant. Yeah, sorghum we can't plant until the spring, but uh, wheat and barley, we can plant both of those starting next month. Um, and it looks like barley has the earliest harvest. Barley you can harvest in June. So I think we'll do barley. Um, and then that'll give us, that'll give us plenty, of, uh, plenty of food for the chickens and, and then we'll sell the remainder. Um, what else can we plant in the fall? Wheat, barley, and canola. Yeah, so maybe we'll do barley on this field, and we'll do canola on the big field in the back. Once we get it made. And then if we get to the point, you know, if there's an update to the map that allows us to sell bales, or we have a sell point for bales at some point, then we can always plant grass back here or in the front and use that instead. But for now, let's uh, let's get this field going. All right, let's unfold. Allow create fields. Let's lower the plow. Set our heading as close to zero as we can. And try to drive in a straight line. I'm not doing a very good job with that. There we go. 359.9. I think that's about the best I can hope for. And we'll take it all the way up to the property line. It'll tell me when I can't go any further. Right there. And then we'll cut across. Two hundred and seventy degrees.
And if it's not perfectly rectangular, it's not the end of the world. I just want to get the most production out of my land as possible. And then as we get over here, I'm going to curve around so we avoid this stand of trees. A graceful curve to 180 degrees. We'll have to remove this tree. Get rid of the stump. And I'm going to throw it in my neighbor's land. We'll deal with it later. Okay, and then I'll curve to the east here. And we'll just go around these trees, try to keep our curves fairly smooth to make it easier to work the land. <laughs> yeah, just like real life. <laughs> exactly. Throw all your yard waste into the neighbor's land. And we'll go down here. Uh, I'll just avoid this boulder completely. looks pretty good. Oops. There we go. The neighbors never come out here, so I'm going to buy that land at some point anyway. <laughs> now, I could be wrong, but I think that... Um I think that plowing grass to make a field also gives us a fertilization stage. Man, I'm really happy with this tractor. Um, at least with this piece of equipment. We've got just the right amount of power because it's, um, it's enough to pull the plow or the subsoiler and and get up the hill at the same time without giving us too much trouble. Okay. A couple more trees. a magical tree.
let's put this over with the next one. There we go. All right. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that'd be cool if you could burn the wood. Just then you get rid of it. But uh, we'll have to, uh, we'll buy a biomass plant at some point so that we have a place to dispose of it and get a little bit of money. At least for these little skinny trees. At some point we might want to do some forestry and carpentry or something like that. And I know in real life you probably wouldn't reverse with this thing lowered. Yeah, this, this is going to be quite a large field. Looks like I just have this one more tree I gotta clear out. So you can get up that hill and still pull it at full speed. That's good. Yeah. Oh, yeah. This is going to be a ton of stone. I think I'm going to. I think I'm going to get that lime factory. Otherwise, I'm just going to end up with a gigantic pile of stone somewhere. Well, I mean, I'm going to have to have a pile of stone anyway, but. Yeah, we'll see if we can get a... We'll see how big that lime factory is and see if we can use that. I'm surprised there aren't more maps. Um, well, maybe there are, but I'm I was going to say I'm surprised there aren't more maps like this one with this concept where you uh, really build your own farm. I like this better than, you know, than the Giants maps where you, uh, I mean, you can build your own farmyard, I guess, but all the fields are pretty much decided.
Yeah, now that makes sense. Well, I'm sure probably most players just want to... Probably most players don't want to have to deal with this. Okay, I think that's the last tree that I need to clear. one more. Hey, McFury. Um, Mick, I just I just started playing this save um, about two hours ago, so we're still fairly early in the game. Um, Shaggy Man, no, a worker can't create a field. They can only work existing fields. I'm sure you could do it. You could probably do it with course play, but uh, that's not out yet, as far as I know. Yep, so I'm just, uh, for those of you who just joined recently, I'm just working our new plot of land. I'm making ourselves a big field here in the back where we're going to plant canola. Yeah, they can go straight. That's one thing that the workers are good for. Um, they're not very good for turning around or anything like that, but... If you want to hire somebody that can drive in a straight line, uh, AI workers are the way to go. Oh, hey, Mick. Um, I'm not far from you at all. I live in El Paso. How are things in the ABQ? Yeah, I, I don't have... Well, I have GPS installed, Apache, but I don't... I didn't put GPS on this vehicle. I'm going to hold off on that. I'm not too concerned about straight lines at the moment. Yeah, we'll, we'll probably use it at some point. But for now, I just kind of like, uh, kind of like freewheeling it. That tree will leave because even if I cut the tree down, I can't use the, I can't use the land there because of the boulder. Oh yeah. Yeah, it definitely makes it easier. You don't have to be so careful. Of course, now that I've got um, now that I've got a lot of room around the edges, I don't have to be too careful about where I'm driving. I'm gonna turn on the cruise control, my trigger finger's getting a little sore. Yeah, so anyway, we, we bought this single plot of land. Uh, this is the same plot of land that you would start on in easy mode. And um, I enlarged I enlarged the field that you start with. Or the, I enlarged the field that's already cut. 
in this plot of land. Um, and then I'm creating this field in the back. In the back half. Uh, this will be a much larger field than the one in the front, obviously. Um, but at the beginning of the game, until you have um, some production buildings or sell points, then arable crops are really uh, going to be the main source of income. So um, I want to use, get as much of the land set up for growing crops as possible. And then later on we'll get into animals, besides the chickens that we've got. Austin and Hutto. I don't know where Hutto is. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I'm, I'm in El Paso, Mick. And uh, no, I'm not a farmer in real life. Although, I mean, playing this game sometimes makes it seem like being a farmer wouldn't be such a bad way to live. But I'm sure that farming in real life is a lot more difficult than playing this game is. Oh, okay. That's awesome, Apache. Yeah, so this map now is on console. You know, I was I was thinking about getting the game for my place or for my son's PlayStation as well, um, just so I could play it from the comfort of the couch. But it's like the console version is like sixty bucks, so I was like, eh, I don't like it that much. <laughs> Hydroponics in the game, you mean, or <laughs> or in real life? Oh, okay. Yeah, I saw something about that in the news. Seems like um, that could be the future of agriculture. You get a lot more. You get a lot more yield from a much smaller space. Oh, okay. Aquaponics is for fish. Okay, I'm sorry. I didn't know that was a thing. Um, so, what is aquaponics then? Is that, is that fish farming or? Oh, okay. Huh. Yeah, it's not, not the place you would expect it. Oh, okay. I see. I know what you mean now. Oh, that's really cool. Yeah, that's... whoops. My video just glitched out, guys. I can't see anything. Okay, there we go. Yeah, I've been... I've been having a problem. 
with uh, video. And it seems to only affect me in FS22, where every once in a while, both of my displays go black and then come back on again. And uh, I'm not sure what is causing it. I updated my drivers. Um, got the latest update for the game. And besides that, I checked the event viewer. Didn't really see anything there, so maybe I should check the maybe I should check the game logs. I don't know if that would say anything, but my only other thought is uh, is maybe my maybe my GPU is overheating or something. But but I don't know why it would just. I mean, I could see like if it shut down for five minutes or something, then you know maybe it's heat protection, but. If it just turns off for a second and then comes back on, I'm really not sure what's causing that. And I know that it, it didn't interrupt the stream, fortunately. Um, yeah. Hmm. So if you couldn't see it on the stream, then that means that means that the GPU is still rendering, right? Um and that would mean that it's the problem is related to the output to the monitors. Oh, it did freeze on the stream? Okay. Hmm. Yeah, I don't know, guys. Um, and it, it also happens when I'm not streaming, by the way, so I, I, I don't think it's... Um, yeah, Windows 10, I'm using Streamlabs, which is basically OBS. tree. Sorry, little fella. Uh, Gona81, thanks for the follow. Appreciate that. Right, so all these little trees we're just throwing into the neighbor's land. Yeah, you think that's better, K-Mac? I know it's, um, as far as customization and stuff, I know OBS Studio is better. OBS Studio is what I use for recording for YouTube, actually. Um, I just got Streamlabs just because it's a fairly turnkey solution for streaming. Oh, okay. Yeah, you get all the plugins and everything. But yeah, so the problem, like I said, it's the game keeps running. Video's frozen, but there's still video. So what could it be? The event log doesn't show anything related to display. Uh, 
Okay, we are done plowing. I'm going to change this back to limit the fields. And we'll go put the plow away. Yay! So we got two great big fields. You think it's Windows Update? <laughs> yeah, could be. Wouldn't surprise me. So, Apache, thanks for the tip on that um, on that subsoiler. Certainly did the trick. Okay. So now we got our kind of small field, and we've got our kind of big field. Oh, well, that's. Um, that's a good point. I mean, I know it's not two hours. Oh, this field, Jim? Is this... Yeah, maybe it's... Maybe it is actually big. I guess compared to some of the base game maps, it's a pretty big field. This is a big field, for sure. Um, yeah, yeah, that's the lizard. Yeah, it's, um, that one is four meters, or six meters, and you can change it to eight. Um, but I don't have the power for eight. Yeah. Yeah, I don't, yeah, who knows. Okay, so let's, um, <clears throat> let's see what our options are for dealing with stone here, guys. Um, so base game stuff... Um, we have, I think the only thing that'll take stone on base game, okay, it's not a factory, maybe it's a selling point. Okay, yeah, we have the debris crusher. <coughs> Um, okay, and that would give us, that would actually give us income from the stones. And it's not too big, you know, so we could, we could stick it over here maybe. Right, and use that to get rid of trash. Well, stones specifically. And that's only 10,000 bucks. Or more, depending on where you put it. Um, the other option is, and I'm just going to look this up on the web so I don't have to leave the game. But there's a Lime Factory mod. Uh, let me go to the mod hub. And I'll, I'll put a link. Oh, wait a minute. That's the wrong one. Sorry. Farming simulator. There we go. Mod hub. And let's look for lime. Ah, here we go. Okay, yeah, there's a couple different options, actually. There's a... There you go. <clears throat> There's the multi-production factory, which costs 170 grand. No. Uh, there's the stone crushing lime production, which costs 15 grand, and it creates lime from the stone. Uh, and it has solar panels on it, so it actually gives you a little bit of income as well. And then there is the much larger lime factory, which is 80,000. And that has a $350 per day maintenance cost. So I think out of, 
I, th I think I like that stone. That stone crushing to lime mod looks pretty good. So let's install that. The game might crash when I quit here. It did last time. Let's see what happens. Yeah. <laughs> Game crashed. And I think that that's, well, I, I'm pretty sure that's because of one of the mods. Maybe it's from the map. I don't know. All right. So we're going to want uh, placeables, I guess. Selling points. Or is it a factory? Let's see. Okay, yeah, this was the one. Yeah, so this is essentially the debris crusher with, with an output pipe that you can get lime out of it. Um, yeah, there's no maintenance cost. Oh, $5 an hour maintenance cost. Um, but you've got solar panels you can use with it. So let's go ahead and get that. And let's turn it on. There we go. All right. Oh, it's the saddle track, really. <laughs> Is it surprising that it's one of the giants downloads that causes the problem? It probably shouldn't be. All right. So let's get Let's get the lime thingy put in. And that was a cell. No, I th it's a factory, not a cell point. There it is. Okay. Right, so stones in one side and lime out the other. Um, where should we put this guy? This thing is really big, isn't it? I wish it was a bit smaller. Um, if I put it like right here. That seems like a decent place for it, I guess. Okay, I don't like that it has concrete around it. This looks like something that should be surrounded by dirt. Okay, it wasn't working. Landscaping, sorry. Painting dirt. Yeah, see it's it's not working. Oh, okay, there we go. Now it's working. All right, let's make that round and let's make it big. Looks like painting under it is going to be a problem. Okay, that looks good. All 
All right, see you, Apache. Okay, so there's the... All right, yeah, so incoming stones, outgoing lime. Perfect. Okay. Yeah, and then I think once we take care of these fields, I'll probably sell it because... Well, no, I guess I'll keep it around because I, I'm going to have other fields in the future. Right. All right, so we need the, we need the rock collector. So let's go buy one. Head over to the shop. Our farm is really shaping up. I'm pretty happy with it so far. And we're still only on day one. Let's uh, speed up time again. Um, the other thing I'm going to want to buy is a trailer. Well, let's see. Yeah, I haven't bought a tipper yet. So I think the first tipper that I buy, I'm going to try to get one that I can convert to a flatbed as well. Um, so that I can use the flatbed to bring pallets back from the store. Although, maybe it would be a good idea to have a flatbed that I can just use with my pickup truck. And I can use that for getting big bags, you know, for, for seed and fertilizer and stuff like that. Um, and I think I'll probably get a fluid wagon to bring liquid, uh, what do you call it, herbicide, back to the farm in large quantities so that I don't have to go back and forth all the time. Um, but we do want to plant in September, so I need to get, I need to get these fields prepared today. Let's see. Um... Yeah. Because I wanted to do canola. Canola is harvestable. We're going to do barley in the smaller field, and we were going to do canola in the big field. That's harvestable in July. Of course, that one I could also just do oats or something else. I could do oats in the spring and... Um, and I could still harvest those in July. So, yeah, so I'm not in such a big hurry for the canola, I guess. Oh, yeah, that's true. That's true, Coca Cola. You could, yeah, I could just leave. Well, as I'm doing now, I could just leave a bunch of my stuff here, right? Uh, what was I going to buy? Oh, yeah, the rock. Collector. Stone picker is what they call it in the biz. And I think I'm just going to get this big one because it's, it's twice as large as all the others. Um, the Rock King does hold more. That holds 3,800. This one only holds 2,000. But it should be a lot quicker with this one. So I'm going to go ahead and buy it. Um... Leasing wouldn't be a bad idea, but <clears throat> um, since you really only need to use it every time you plow, I guess, <clears throat> which would be every three, essentially every three years. Um, but I expect that we'll be doing a lot of expanding, so. Especially since the land here is fairly inexpensive. Oh, I should have brought my... Uh, I should have brought my front loader with me so I could bring one of those tools back. <laughs> Didn't think of that. Oh well. Um, and looking at my money situation, I think I might buy a bigger cedar as well. Um, you know, I got that remount, that rear mounted. Uh, three meter wide one because again uh, starting off we we had a 200 horsepower vehicle but then we realized that to 
uh, create the fields efficiently. We needed something bigger, so I've got, uh, was it 285 or 305 horsepower or something, so I can, I can use a much bigger seeder than one that does fertilizer at the same time. Alright, yeah, so we're gonna we're gonna pick up stones and then we will put down some lime. Hello Norway. I don't know what you just said. Whoops. Um but I assume that it was complimentary. Anyway, welcome to the stream. Yeah, and supposedly... Supposedly, we'll get 4,000 lime for every 1,000 stone. So, every time this thing fills up, I should get about 8,000 liters of lime. Oh, come on. It's getting a little picky here about who owns what. You know, I should maybe um, I should maybe plant a little border or something. Yeah. So graphically, my field extends into land that I don't technically own yet. We're gonna buy it. It's we're gonna buy it anyway at some point. It's not too expensive. Whoops. I am not good at backing things up. Although I'm sure you don't need to hear me say that to know that it's true. <laughs> yeah. You know, and I think you could use um, I think you could use a roller for this too and just push the rocks down. Oh, hey Norway, you're Norwegian. Okay. Um yeah, I, I guess that from your name and and your salutation. How's your English? Hopefully you understand us, but anyway, um, welcome. Nice to have new friends from Europe here. And Bloodline, hello to you. Oh, so as I was saying, um, I think you can also use a roller for these uh, for these small stones that are appearing in this in these fields. And um, it doesn't pick them up, it just pushes them back down into the dirt. Um, but, since, uh, 
since we have that lime machine over there, we can use the stones to get some free lime. Well, not free, but I think that building will pay for itself eventually. Because lime is not free. It's not terribly expensive, but we use a lot of it. So... <laughs> Oh, yeah, exactly. Yeah, and then it comes back up when you cultivate, right? So now that I've got these lines on the field from plowing, I should be able to just keep the front of my tractor pointed at it and go in a reasonably straight line. You can definitely see the, or feel the stones in the field from the in-cab view, huh? Yeah, so I'll just keep my nose pointed down this this furrow here. And that should keep us going pretty straight. <laughs> A limestone cowboy. <laughs> uh, that's funny. bad. Okay, we'll follow this one. Sure, I'm picking everything up. All right, let's do the next one. Or I'll just go down the middle. There we go. That should do it. Uh oh. <laughs> now what do I do? finish off this little spot here so we don't have to come back to it again. So I gotta tell you, starting, you know, starting where we did with this map and watch it turn into something um, is very satisfying. I can see why so many people like this map. <laughs> yeah, you're probably right, Connect. They turn outside the field and and they drive in reverse with their plow lowered, <laughs> like I did earlier. <laughs> I 
Okay, let's do it the right way this time. Alright, thanks Jim. Appreciate you being here as always. done. At least with this field. The other one's going to take a bit of work. And um, I'm almost out of time for today, so we'll, I'll probably work on that other field in my spare time between now and our next stream. Although I think, I think rather than picking the rock out of that field, since that one can wait, that one can wait until next season for planting. Uh, whereas this particular field, we need to plant by the end of September. And sorry, I missed that notification. Oh, thanks for the follow, uh, Pequod. Appreciate that. So I think we'll get this one completely ready and planted, or seeded, I should say. Um, and then we'll go to the other one. We're going to put barley in this field. And then we'll be able to use that to feed our chickens. So we don't have to buy chicken feed anymore. And we should have enough left over to sell as well. Okay. So let's go dump this out into our new crushing machine and see how it works. Is it done already? Whoops. Activate. Oh, okay. I didn't have it activated yet. Okay. Oh, and it looks like that works pretty quickly. So this will give us about 5,000 liters of lime. Um, now, I'm not sure how much lime I need for this field, but it's probably more than 5,000 liters. So I think probably what I'll want to do is um, um, yeah, it looks like it looks like it stores it or at least it's storing it now. I don't know how much it'll hold though. I wonder if it says in here. Yeah, it doesn't say how much it'll hold, but it looks like it'll be a lot. Yeah, that's 5,500 and it's barely, it's barely registering. So it looks like this will hold quite a bit. Um, if it doesn't, I can, I'll buy a silo to store it in. Um, Shaggy Man. That's a good question. Um, I do need to get back to Factorissimo, don't I? Um... I don't know, um, but let me let me think about it. Um, we've got a couple of options. Um, one is that we maybe we just start alternating streams between Factorio and Farm Sim, um, and the second option would be I keep doing farm sim on stream and I start making some YouTube videos for Factorissimo. 
And that is the direction that I'm leaning towards right now because I think, well, I mean, I guess both games really lend themselves well to to working on for more than 30 minutes at a time, you know. Um, so l let me let me give us some thought. Let me mull that over. But I will get I will get back to Factorissimo, let's say within the next week, and start making some progress on that. Okay, so it, it'll. The decision will just be whether I do that on YouTube, you know, with uh, 30 to 60 minute YouTube videos or whether I do it on stream. Um, but I do want to keep working on this uh, because I'm, I'm really enjoying this right now. So, um, yeah. So, like I said, because of because of our calendar here, we want to get if I'm going to plant barley. It's I got to finish it by. Oh, wait a minute. Oh, I have until October for barley. Okay. Yeah, I can plant barley in September or October. All right. So, although if I want to harvest it in June, I need to plant it in September. So, here's what I'm thinking. So, what I'm going to do is um, between now and the next and the next time we're together, um, I'm going to pick up I'm going to pick up rocks from the north field. Um and I'll use those to make lime. And then I'm going to lime and fertilize this field and get the barley planted. And then and then I'll stop there so that in the next stream we'll work on our north field and get that ready for for crops and we can mess around with chickens or whatever else we want to do. Right, cuz um because the north field is going to, the north field is going to take a while to work on. Um, so I'll do all the stone picking up there, offline, and then we'll get back to the good stuff. Um, so I'm going to slow time down. I'll probably slow it down to one time to one x or 0.5 x, and then uh, we'll be in September when we come back again. Hopefully that works for everybody. All right, so that's it for me. I'm going to call it a day. I'm going to go have breakfast. I've had my coffee, but I haven't eaten yet, and I'm getting hungry. So thank you all for being here, as always. Uh, I definitely enjoy it. Hope you did, too. And I will see you all Wednesday evening for the next stream. Take care now.